time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Hello and welcome. I want to thank you for joining us today on Pastor Speaks. Today I want to spend some time speaking to you and talking with you about the one thing that I love so much and that's the grace of God. God's grace for us is so great, so rich, so full of mercy and I'm so thankful for everything that He does for us. This morning I want to take a look at God's grace demonstrated through Peter. God gave us a great example of His grace, and it's outlined for us all the way through the Scripture. If we'll take a look at some of the things that happened in the life of Peter and some of the things that God did through Peter and in him, we can begin to see some of the amazing things that God's grace does for us today. God's grace is so much more powerful than what we oftentimes realize and oftentimes give Him credit for. So many times we look at it, grace as just something that takes away our sin, but instead God's grace is something greater than that. I really like this acronym. It says, for grace, it says this, God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace gives us the power to change. God doesn't just leave us where we are. He doesn't bring us to a point of salvation and then say, well, now you've accepted salvation, you've accepted me in your life, and that's it. But instead, God equips us with His grace so that we can continue to change in our life and continue to draw closer and closer to Him. And I'm so thankful for that grace that He puts in our lives. The first thing that I want to talk about today in regards to grace is that God's grace gives us invitation. God's grace gives us invitation. I want us to notice that one of the first things that God did was He called Peter. Peter didn't have any experience. Peter didn't, uh, he, he didn't know anything about following God. He had known, uh, you know, he had known the Jewish laws. He had known Jewish principles. But he didn't know what it was to follow after Jesus. But Jesus one day comes to Peter. And in Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, we see this. It says this, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting their net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. I don't know about you, but I've oftentimes wondered, what was it about Jesus that was so powerful at that moment that Peter was willing to leave the only thing he ever knew? Peter was willing to leave the only profession he ever knew, which was being a fisherman, and follow Jesus with everything that was inside of him. It was at that moment he made a decision and he said, I'm going to follow this man wherever he has me go. I'm going to follow him and I'm going to run after him no matter what it may cost me. I'm going to leave everything that I've known, everything that my father's taught me, everything that I've known to make money in my life. I'm going to set it all down and I'm going to follow him. See, Jesus started at this point and he began to call Peter at this point. It was before Peter even had any idea what he was doing. It was before Peter even knew the direction of where his life was going to be going. But Jesus said, I see something inside of you, Peter, and my grace reaches out to you, and it's going to call your name, and I've called you to come with me. Today, God's grace does the same thing to each and every one of you today. He calls and He gives you invitation. Will you come and will you follow me? Will you come and will you go where it is that I'm leading you and that I'm calling you today? God's grace gives us that invitation. The second thing that God's grace does is it gives us opportunities. God's grace gives us opportunities to be able to do things that we never thought we could do on our own. Things that we never thought were possible. 
God's grace gives us opportunity. He sees, the, he sees what's inside of us and he knows what he's placed in our life. And when he recognizes that, he puts opportunity in our life for us to be able to do something. Jesus presented an opportunity to Peter in his life. This is in Matthew chapter 14, verses 27 through 33. It says this, But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped and the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. So many times we read this story and we see this story as a failure for Peter. But today I want us to look at this story and realize it's not a failure of Peter. Instead, he was the only disciple that had enough faith to even get out of the boat. Jesus gave him an opportunity to trust him. Jesus gave him an opportunity to put his faith in him. And Peter said, I'm willing to put my faith in you. I'm willing to step where nobody else is willing to step. I'm willing to go where nobody else is willing to go. And I'll take these steps out of the boat. Jesus, I, I don't believe that Jesus was discouraged with Peter. Instead, I believe he was so full of joy. And I think that his words of, you have so little faith, was... Peter, look what you did with what you have today. Think of the possibilities that are in front of you. Think of the opportunities that are in front of you. Look at what you've accomplished with the little faith that you have today. God gave him an opportunity to be able to do what it was that he was called to do. Jesus began to present this to him and said, Peter, if you trust me, Peter, if you'll trust me, if you'll just honor me, will be able to do something great here on the face of the earth. God gives us opportunities that so many times we don't even expect to see on our own. Today I'm here, standing here, talking to you across the TV, across the airwaves, and it wasn't even 20 years ago I wouldn't have been able to stand and speak in front of anybody. I had a tough time delivering even five minutes to anybody. But because of God's grace for me in my life, God said, you may see yourself this way, but I see something great inside of you. And he begins to pour out and open doors and open opportunities for the things that God wants to do in our lives. God sees so many things inside of each and every one of you that you don't even see in yourself. And God will continue to give you opportunity to be able to recognize just how much he believes in you. And just how much he'll carry you if you'll put your faith in him. The third thing that grace does for us is this. God's grace corrects. Sometimes we think God's grace is just there to forgive us. But no, God's grace is so much more than that. God's grace is there to correct us. He doesn't want to see us stumbling over the same things that we've stumbled over all of our lives. He doesn't want to see us go through the same struggles that we've suffered with and that we've gone through day after day, year after year. Instead, God desires to bring change to our life. And to bring change to us sometimes doesn't happen with just a soft, simple pat on the shoulder. But sometimes we need the corrective voice of God. In Matthew chapter 16, we see... In verses 15 and 16, we see this. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said, Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus was so excited about that. He was so excited about that, and he began to tell Peter, Peter, you're the rock. You're the rock that I'm going to begin to build my church on. You're the rock that I'm going to begin to build my church on. And he was saying, he wasn't saying, Peter, you're the foundation. He said, Peter, you're the, a piece of the foundation because you know who I am, the true foundation. 
because you know exactly that I'm the true foundation, because you know who I am, I'm going to begin to use you and I'm going to build my church upon you. You see, this, is, this happens in the same chapter that, God, that Jesus all of a sudden begins to correct Peter. Just a few verses down in the same chapter of Matthew 16, verses 21 through 23, we see this. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders and the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for, for me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. You see, in the very same chapter that Jesus praised Peter, he had to bring correction to Peter. He didn't bring correction to Peter because of what Peter was saying. He brought, he brought correction to Peter because he needed to change Peter's perspective. Peter's perspective was that Jesus was the Messiah and that he was going to establish a reign on earth today. But Jesus said there's something greater that has to happen before the reign of the kingdom of God can be on the earth. There's something greater that has to happen before the Messiah returns like you're longing. Peter didn't understand that at this point, and Jesus was trying to change his correction. Another important thing here is this. Jesus wasn't calling Peter Satan. So many times we read that and we think, wow, those are some pretty strong words for Peter. But those were the very things that Satan was trying to convince Jesus of. The fact that he didn't have to die. The fact that he didn't have to be a sacrifice. P Satan had been trying to convince Jesus from that his whole life. You don't have to fulfill the plan of God on your life. And Jesus recognized those words and he said, Get behind me, Satan. I have to follow my Father's plan. And Peter became corrected by Jesus that day. He was saying, Peter, change your perspective. Change your perspective. So many times we see things in our lives that aren't going the way that we planned on them to go. They're not going the way that we saw them happening. As a matter of fact, terrible tragedies come into our life. And sometimes our perspective becomes wrong because of those things. We begin to see things through our eyes, our tainted eyes, based upon what's happening on this earth. And sometimes Jesus needs to correct us and say, put your perspective back where it needs to be. Put your perspective back on me so that you can see my plan for you, so that you can know where it is that I desire to take you. The next thing that grace does is that grace prepares us for what's ahead. Grace prepares us for what's ahead. In Matthew chapter 26, 31 through 35, it says this, On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight, all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, Even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Jesus took this opportunity to prepare Peter for what was in front of him. God's grace was preparing Peter for what he was about to face. Jesus wasn't saying this as he, he wasn't scolding Peter. Jesus already knew this. Sometimes I wonder, why did he even bring this to Peter's attention? Why did he even tell him? I, I know he knew, but why? And the reason that he did it was because his grace was trying to prepare Peter and said, it's not over. 
You're going to deny me, but it's not over. You're going to deny me, but it's not over. You're going to say it. You're going to deny that you've ever been with me. You're going to de deny you've ever known me, but it's not over. My promises still hold true no matter what happens tonight. That's what Jesus was really saying to Peter. My promises still hold true. Why, did, why does he say that? He said, you're going to deny me, but I'll go ahead of you and I'll meet you in Galilee. I'll meet you in Galilee. I'll be there waiting for you when I rise again. That's what he was saying. That's what he was declaring to Peter. And that's where the promises of God came into his life. He was preparing him. It was through the Holy Spirit's guidance that he was saying to Peter, don't give up. You're going to leave tonight with a broken heart, but don't give up. Don't stop. Don't ever stop going after the things of God. Right after this, we see an amazing thing. Not only did God's grace give him, prepare him for what was ahead, but God's grace came to restore Peter. In John chapter 21, verses 3 through 7, we see this. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. See, right now, Peter's going back to the only thing he knew. Peter was discouraged. Peter was down. Peter didn't understand what it was that God was trying to do. Jesus had gone through all of these steps with Peter, walking him through everything, but Peter was so discouraged by what, he, what had happened and by the fact that he denied Jesus that the only thing he knew left to do was to go back to fishing. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing We'll come too, they all said. So they all went out to the boat, and they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter it is the Lord when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord he put on his tunic for he had stripped for work he jumped in the water and he headed back to shore Peter was longing to see Jesus once again he was longing to see Jesus once again because he desired to be restored back to Jesus he desired for that relationship that he once had that belief that he knew that Jesus had in him to be restored once again. And once again, God's grace steps in and restores Peter. God's grace steps in. Everything that Jesus had done through the life of Peter was to prepare him for what was to come. Everything that Jesus had done was to get Peter to a place of restoration. Peter was broken because of everything that had happened and he desired that relationship with Jesus. The awesome thing about grace is this. Grace will never leave us where we are. Grace will never leave you where you are. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're going through today. It doesn't matter what's been going on in your life or the difficulties you've faced this day. God's grace will never leave you where you are. He desires a great future for you and he has a place for you to go. He has something on his mind for you in your life. God's grace doesn't stop at restoration. God's grace continues on. And the next thing that we see his grace doing in the life of Peter is this. God's grace promotes. God's grace promotes. In Acts chapter 2, verse 14, Peter had been in the upper room and he had been seeking God. He had gone through all kinds of things, not understanding the whole picture of what it was that God wanted to do. Not understanding everything that Jesus had laid out for him. He had spent three and a half years with Jesus and he still didn't understand. 
But it was in that upper room when the Holy Spirit fell that all of a sudden Peter understood. And all of a sudden there was something that came upon Peter's life. There was a boldness and a power that he spoke with that he never spoke before. And Peter, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, it says this, Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. And he continued to preach one of the greatest messages that we've ever seen. A great salvation message to everybody that was there, to all of the people that were there. And we see 3,000 come to know Jesus that very day, come to receive salvation. It was through the promises of Jesus all the way through this to this point in time when the Holy Spirit comes and empowers Peter and begins to cause something new to happen in Peter that's never happened before. Until this point in time, Peter had waved back and forth just, just all over the place with the circumstances of life, not understanding everything that Jesus wanted. But after the Holy Spirit came, brought promotion to his life, he spoke with boldness and clarity. He understood what it was that Jesus wanted to do. He understood with, with clarity what it was that Jesus wanted to do. You see, today... Jesus doesn't want to hear about your failures of yesterday. Jesus doesn't want to hear about your failures of yesterday, but instead he wants to hear about your faith for tomorrow. He doesn't, he, Jesus isn't looking at your failures in, of yesterday and saying it's because of those things that you've got to stay where you're at. But instead, he's saying, how much will you trust me for tomorrow? How much will you believe me for tomorrow? How much faith will you place in what I've spoken over your life for tomorrow? Yesterday might not have been good. Two weeks ago might not have been good. Three years ago might have had its problems. But it's not about the problems of yesterday. It's about your faith for tomorrow. Do you believe the promises of God today? If you believe the promises of God, I promise His grace will promote you. His grace will bring you to places that you've never expected. His grace will take you and move you to be able to do things for the kingdom of God that you never thought were possible. The last one I want to look at today is this. God's grace reveals. God's grace reveals. There were some things that Peter still needed to learn. And he needed to see what it was that Jesus had intended to do. And we see some of those things happening in Acts chapter 9, verses 9 through 15. It says this, The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance and he saw the sky open and something like a large sheet let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds. Then the voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter declared, for I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again, Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This is something that Peter had to learn. It was a lesson that he didn't quite understand yet. God was saying, Not only through my death was I going to bring salvation to the Jews, but I have a plan of salvation for everyone. For everyone on the face of the earth, I have a plan to bring them. And Peter had to begin to understand this. He had to begin to see what it was that Jesus desired to do on the earth. God's grace desired to reveal God's promise to him. It's not because we have it all together that God shows us what's to come. But it's because his grace desires to reveal it to us. It's not because everything in our life is perfect that God begins to speak to us and reveal what it is that we need to see. But it's because His grace desires to reveal it to us. In Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35 we see this. 
Peter had gone to the house of Cornelius and he had met there with them and he said this as he comes to a conclusion. Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and those who do what's right. Grace desired to reveal God's greatest plan to restore all of humanity back to himself and to bring everyone into one family. God's grace will always reveal his desires to us if we'll listen. Today I want to ask you, will you take the time to listen to what it is that God desires to reveal to you? Maybe today it's something about your life. Something that God has been trying to reveal to you about your life for the last several years, but you haven't heard it yet. Maybe it's something that's happened in your life recently, and you haven't understood why it's happened. Will you let God's grace reveal to you today what it is that He's doing in your life? Will you let God speak into your heart today what it is that He desires to do in you and through you? Today, I want you to understand that God has a great plan for you. He did not place you on this earth just out of happenstance, but instead He placed you here with a purpose. He placed you here to be able to fulfill everything that God desires for you. He placed you here with a purpose in mind. And he said, I've got a plan for them. And I desire not only to reveal it to them, but I desire to speak it to them. I desire to give them opportunities to make it happen. I desire to work in their life. And I desire to show them just how much I love them, how much faith I have in them, and how much I believe in the promises that I've given them. Today, I want you to know that God has given promises to your life. You may be wondering what they are. You may not be sure about what they are. But He desires to reveal these things to you. He desires to bring His plan and purpose through His grace into your life. Will you join with me today as we pray and as we honor God for what He's done in our life? Father, I thank you for each and every person that's listening today. I thank you for the promises and plans that you've put in their life. And Father, I ask that you would move in their life and that they would see your grace active in their life. We thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen. And sweet is the way he takes me by the hand. Helps me down